So hi everyone, thank you very much for watching this uh, video, which is about holographic MIME communications. So I'll try to let you understand what we mean with the word of holographic MIME communications. And I'll try to let you understand what we have done in this, in this area in collaboration with a postdoc of my group, Andrea Pizza and Thomas Marzetta from the University of New York University in, in US. So MIMA communications. MIMA communications have been investigated for years in wireless communications under different conditions with multiple transmit antennas and single receive antennas, multiple receive antennas and single transmit antennas and so forth. The latest implementation of MIMA communication technology is Massive MIMA, which is one of the key technology in 5G networks. So the common characteristic of any MIMA communication technology is that if you want to assess the performance of the technology, then you need to have a model for the MIMA channel metrics, which is good enough to capture the characteristics of the main characteristics of the technology. And at the same time, it should be mathematically tractable for, for us in communication theory that we want to gain insights into the ultimate performance of the technology. Let me give you an example. So if you consider a line of sight propagation condition where you have a transmitter and a receiver communicating and there is nothing in between. So in this case, the MIMO channel matrix can be easily represented by the uh, array response vectors at both sides. By using this model, if you compute the capacity of the system, then it turns out that you can achieve the full array gain of the system, which is given by the product of the number of antennas at the source, the number of antennas and the receiver, but you can only transmit one single data stream because you have only one DOF in the channel because the, because the, cha the MIMO channel matrix is a rank one channel matrix. So there is, there is no way to transmit more streams, no matter how many antennas you have at the source, and the receiver. Is that right? Yes, it is under the conditions that the model is correct. So if you change the model, so if you assume that you now consider two planar surfaces, sort and receive planar surfaces, they are transmitting in the same operating conditions, line of sight propagation conditions. So if you don't if you don't rely on that model, but if you rely on electromagnetic principles, you can prove that the number of DOF is not one, but it's proportional to the area of the receiver, the area of the source divided by the wavelength square and the distance square. So for example, under these conditions, if you have a if the two are transmitting in the distance of 10 meters, then the DOF are equal to 16 if you operate the network at 30 gigahertz, or they are much more, many more if you uh, if you if you operate the system at the frequency of 300 gigahertz. So this means that we, if we want to exploit the the the, the, the potential the, the, the potential of the um, electromagnetic propagation conditions, we should rely on proper channel models, able to capture the characteristics of the uh, MIMO technology. So why we are not able to capture these characteristics by using the simple line of sight MIMO channel model that you can find in many test books? The reason is very simple. That model relies on the turnover thought field approximation, which is valid under the conditions that the distance is bigger than the size of the rays. If this is not the case, then we operate in the Fresnel near field region and there is much more to gain in that region. And to give you an example, to give you examples, so in this table here, I report the, the, the <clears throat> 
a report, the distance at which we are going to operate in the front of our far field region. As you can see, the near field may occur at any frequency, even if you are considering mid-range communications. So the common belief is that we are going to operate in the Fresnel near field region only if we consider short range communications. But this is not the case. If you increase the frequency, then the, the near field region can be very large. And, and, and even if you have a distance of hundreds of meters, you can still operate in that region and not in the Fraunhofer far field region. So the message here is very simple. So if we are going to operate as is expected in future networks, high frequencies, not only, not only in the con, not only in the over the millimeter wave bands, but if we're going to operate in the terrorist bands, if we're going, if you're going to operate larger and larger arrays, then the, 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 we're going to operate in the far field, in the near field region of the communication system. And the classical traditional stochastic MIMO channel model, models that we use in communication theory are no longer good enough to capture the characteristics of the MIMO technology. And this, is, this is going to open a lot of challenges, but at the same time, a lot of opportunities. So we can really exploit the near field radiative, radiative propagation conditions to actually achieve or exploit more the electromagnetic field. And this is precisely the concept of holographic communications. So to fully exploit the propagation conditions offered by electromagnetics in, in a way to design a system which is able to ultim, ultimately exploit the degrees of freedom provided by the electromagnetic propagation conditions. So let me now show you very briefly what we have done in this contest. So we have considered arrays of relatively large size compared to the wavelength, such that we're such such as expected in future networks. And then instead of relying on classical stochastic MIMO channel models that are inspired to array signal processing techniques and rely on the far field approximation, the far field approximation, we have started from the first principles of electromagnetics and we have directly modeled the channel in between any point from the source to the receiver, to the receiver. And then we have used this representation to compute the MIMO channel matrix between the source and the receiver. In doing this, we have assumed to have a mono, monochromatic and scalar waves. So we are not taking into account the polarization into the model. And then we assume that the channel, the, the electromagnetic field can be modeled as a zero mean spatially stationary Gaussian random field. Under these conditions, we have derived a MIMO channel model, which is, which takes these four, where where these two are semi-unitary matrices, which depends only, which depend only on the array geometry. And if you consider uniform sampling, they are basically the DFT matrices. Then we have the matrix H tilde here, which is given by this uh, exponential function, which are diagonal, and then a matrix here, which contains the coupling coefficients between the source and the receiver in the angular domain. So basically we have a low rank approximation because the inner matrix here has a dimension which is smaller than the dimension of the spatial matrix here. And the dimension of this matrix is given directly by the electromagnetic propagation condition. So we have a low rank approximation of the MIMO channel matrix with respect to fixed spatial basis functions, which are the DFT basis functions. And then in between, we have this random matrix which, which takes into account how the source and the receiver are coupled in the angular domain. And to 
lady understands what 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 i mean with it with 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 this so if you consider the elements of this matrix that you have in the angular domain this matrix is basically telling you how any angular domain uh, angular direction the sorts it's coupled with it, with a particular angular angular uh, direction in the, uh, the receiver side and by by studying the structure of this matrix you can measure the number of parallel channels that you can establish in the in, in, in the in, over the channel and the level of diversity of the channel itself so you can you can actually um, gain insights into the dof of the system and the level of diversity of the system itself so if you compute the statistics of the channel, then you get a model, which is not the Kronecker model, which means that the sorts and receiver are not the couple. And if you go to measure the spatial properties, spatial correlation properties of the channel, it turns out that it's quite correlated in space, even if you consider isotropic propagation conditions, which means that, for example, from this picture, if you compare the spatial correlation properties given by this model which is which is inspired by electromagnetic principles compared to the independent and identically distributed really fitting channel model you see that the number of significant eigenvalues is much smaller than 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 in the case of really fitting propagation in the case in the case of id really fitting which means that you have spatial correlation in the model. At the same time, the conclusion is that you should never use this model, the independent and identically distributed refitting model, if you use planar arrays. This is probably doable if you use linear arrays, but it's not doable if you use planar arrays. Since we have now this representation from the spatial domain to the angular domain, this is the transceiver arch architecture to achieve the performance of the system. So we have the spatial domain, and then we we go in the angular domain by using the DFT processing. Once you're in the, in the angular domain, you can design your signal processing algorithms for channel estimation, combining, and, and pre-coding. And the, the, the beauty of this model is that in the angular domain, everything is a function of the dimension provided by the electromagnetic propagation conditions. It doesn't matter how many antennas you have, you're going to exploit the, 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 the degrees of freedom of the electromagnetic propagation conditions. So I'm going to finish the talks and the, the time is running. So what we have done here, we have considered the, the, the concept of holographic MIMA communications, which means that high frequencies, large antenna arrays, and then a model, channel model, which is able to fundamentally capture the characteristics of this uh, MIMO technology. The model that we propose is based on a Fourier plane wave representation of the model and is valid in an near field and far field. The hope is to excite people, especially people in communication theory, to, to work with physics is part channel model, because this is the only way to push further, further, further the limits of the MIMO, of MIMO technologies. Possible research directions. First, first of all, to include coupling. The, the coupling is not included into the model, and then to include parallelization into the model. And then what we need, we need measurements to validate the model and to design the system parameters. These are the references where, which you can uh, read if you want to know more details. And I want to thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you soon.